The cemetery is overgrown with rotting vegetation. As the scent of death fills your nose, you feel the ground begin to rumble. A monstrosity of vines rises from the ground and lashes out, grabbing you with great strength. The sight of skulls buried beneath this abomination's leaves is not a comforting sight. What's up my fellow crafting DMs? Welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. This week, I felt like building another monster and I was flipping through Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes again, which is quickly becoming my favorite monster manual and I came across the Corpse Flower. Definitely one of the coolest monsters in this book. Very inspiring and perfect to build. I don't think there is a commercially available mini for this. Maybe there is, I don't know. I have seen one other person build one of these things on the Tabletop Crafters Guild. So to that person, hey man, big ups. You're the first person I saw to build it, but I'm gonna be the second, maybe? Super fun project. Definitely using a lot of different techniques and materials than I usually use. But in the end, it turned out really friggin' cool. Let's take a look at how I built it. So looking at the artwork for this monster, I knew I would need a few things for this build. One would be some sort of ball or mass to make up the main part of this form. And I remembered that I had some styrofoam balls of various sizes that I had picked up at Dollarama years ago. So I grabbed one of those to act as the body. I also knew that I would need a lot of foliage and I do have a pretty good collection of various plastic plants and whatnot, but I knew I didn't have anything great for the vines. So I headed to my favorite dollar store, which is this massive Dollarama in Winnipeg, and I set out looking for some things to use for vines. I first checked the plant section, and honestly, there was nothing really great there. But then I remembered they had a section for gardening that had some interesting items. And I found these cool plant ties that are meant for tying plants to sticks and whatnot. They have wires in them, so you could flex them, and they're coated in different material. I bought two different kinds because I wasn't sure which ones would work the best. When I got home, I realized that one of them probably wouldn't work too well because it was coated in a sort of silicone rubber and I didn't think that would work too well with paint in the long run, but the other ones were coated in a simple styrofoam. In order to give these a nice texture and to look more like vines and to also harden the foam up on them a bit, I used a heat gun to melt them and this created a really cool texture and it really cauterized the foam. Once I had a bunch of these vines made, I started attaching them to the styrofoam ball and the wire inside these made that really easy because I could hot glue these in place, but kind of impale them with the wire and scrunch up the foam at the end. And this would make them really, really secure. After I had a bunch of these in place, I gave them a big coating of hot glue to thicken them up, stabilize them, make them a bit stronger and add some more texture to them. I needed a base for this bad boy, and I found this black coffee can lid that was basically the perfect size. On its own, it was really floppy and not very solid, so I decided to grab some half-inch insulation foam and cut out a circle that would perfectly fit inside it using my Proxon hot wire cutter and the circle cutting jig from shiftinglands.com. Once I had the circle cut, I hot glued it into the lid. I then beveled the edges using an Ulfa knife, filled in some of the gaps using hot glue, beveled it some more, and then coated the edges with hot glue again to make a bit of a mound. The foam was a perfect base for this piece because I could then cut the vines to length, bend them to shape, and then impale them into the foam, and this would attach the mini, well, mini big monster to the base in a really strong way. Using various different plastic plants that I had in my collection, all from the dollar store, I started to cover the styrofoam sphere and I wanted this to look thick and lush and full of vegetation. One thing to note is that as I was gluing these, I was being sure to really fully cover 
the entire styrofoam ball with hot glue so that any parts that weren't covered by plastic plant were covered by hot glue because I knew that I'd want to be spray painting this thing later and I didn't want that ball inside to melt. For the underside of the sphere, I wanted it to look more like a root structure. So I actually used some of this reindeer moss, I think it's called. It's this moss that you can get at basically any craft store. It has a finer structure. It's a little bit thinner and it is a real bit of plant. So it definitely looks natural. To decorate the base, I use the most basic technique out there, which is basically just covering the whole thing in PVA glue and then dusting it with construction sand. I did spray some water on the sand afterwards and this helps the PVA glue rise up and really soak into the sand and it will make this incredibly strong. I realized afterwards that the base was a little bit too plain and flat. I wanted some bigger stones to break it up. So I carved two big rocks out of XPS foam and kind of awkwardly glued them in place in the still wet sand. I also didn't like how some of these vines had ended so bluntly at a fairly thick point. So I grabbed some more plastic flowers and glued on some extension pieces, so to speak. And I really liked the way this looked because it kind of gave the vines a sort of hook-like attribute. I glued them in place and then just built up some hot glue to kind of blend them into the vine. Because I was gonna be spray painting this thing, those foam rocks would be very vulnerable. So I knew I needed to protect them using some Mod Podge. So I gave the whole base a quick coating of Mod Podge and black paint. Then I took this sucker outside to spray paint it and I based the whole thing using this kind of dark foresty green and I made sure to really get full coverage here, get in all the crevices and cracks, cover up all the hot glue, cover up all of the styrofoam ball and give it a nice even coating. To give it some tonality and some highlights, I then used a lighter kind of yellowish green spraying it from a distance at the top to hit the highest edges. This is basically the same technique as Zenithal priming where you are doing a highlight with a rattle can. It's super easy to do. It's a very fast way to bring out details on a piece that has a lot of little finicky bits and bobs poking out everywhere. I then painted out the base to look more earthy. I painted out the stones in a light gray and then the ground cover in a very regular medium brown, basically just to look like mud. I gave everything a little bit of a dry brushing using a tan and then gave the entire base a wash with a dark brown blackish wash. For the flowers, I used the toilet paper and glue method. I just wanted something that was really lightweight, so I didn't want to use a clay or putty of any kind. So I just took some toilet paper, wet it down a little bit, added some PVA glue, twisted it up into little petal-like shapes. I didn't make them as pointed as the artwork. I made them look a little bit more like rose petals, I guess. This was mostly because that's just what worked out better with the material I was using. I had to wait an excessively long time for these tiny little things to dry, but once they were dry, I could paint them. And I painted them just by using really, really watered down paint. First, a coat of a really watered down yellow, and then I did some orange on the tips, and then finally a little bit of watered down red just on the very, very tips and kind of on the inside of where the petals met. After that, I took them outside and sprayed them with a gloss varnish. I used the glossiest varnish I had on hand and I actually gave these several coats because I wanted them to be both really hard and sealed, but also really shiny and wet looking. Then I got to work preparing the skulls and I did this in the easiest way I could think of, which was by using a bunch of pre-made skulls. And Citadel actually makes a really cool product, which is literally just a box 
full of hundreds of 28 millimeter skulls. I glued the skulls together in bunches of three or four, and then I used some paper clips to create a pin on the back of them. I used a really old model makers technique, which is using baking soda and super glue to create a kind of hard plastic. Just put a little bit of powder on the spot you want to weld and then drip some super glue on it and it gives you a really strong bond. No, I was not doing some kind of weird drugs with that spoon there. In retrospect, that spoon and white powder was probably a poor choice for video. I primed the skulls using some flat white primer. I just stuck the little pegs into some styrofoam, took them outside and sprayed them. Once that was dry, I used some Citadel wash and Agrax earth shade. I just dipped them right in the wash and then stuck them back in the styrofoam and let them dry off. This is about as simple as it gets for painting skulls. With the flowers ready, the skulls ready and the plant ready, I was able to combine all three to make one super cool corpse flower. The flowers I just attached by hot gluing them in place anywhere that where there was a bit of a gap in the foliage and the skulls, well, I just used that paper clip to pin them into the styrofoam ball. It definitely would have looked better if I did three or four times the amount of skulls on this thing, but to be honest, I did not want to waste that many skulls on just one project. I think the amount I used implies the message well enough. I decorated the base using a few more of the same plants that I pre-painted separately just by poking a little hole in the base with a toothpick and then gluing the stem of the plant into that hole. I also used some static grass to add a little bit more foliage to the base. These are my favorite grass tufts. I reviewed them in a previous video and I'll put a link for them in the description. I have to admit, I'm really pleased with the way this project turned out. I think it's very true to the source material. I did take some small liberties. The thing is bigger than it's probably supposed to be. The flowers are a little bit different, but overall, I think it kind of nails the aesthetic from the artwork. And it was a fun project to do because it used a lot of materials and techniques that I don't normally get to use. So that was really fun. If you want to pick up any of the tools or supplies that I used for this or other builds, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment store where I link to all of the things that I use myself and recommend for you. Purchasing through those links helps fund these videos. Another great way you can fund these videos if you love them and you want to help me keep making them each and every single week is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. The support from you guys on Patreon is the number one reason that I am able to bring you guys these videos every week and constantly try to improve my quality. That's it guys, I hope you found this video informative and entertaining and most of all inspiring. If you did, hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below. If there's some other badass cool monster that you think I should be building, let me know down there and I will consider building it. If you don't have Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes yet, I highly encourage you to consider picking it up if you play 5e. It is my favorite monster manual that Wizards has put out for this edition. It's super rad. And no, Wizards of the Coast is not sponsoring me or this video. I wish they would, but they're not. I just really like this book. I'll put a link for it down below. If you're new to the channel and you just stumbled on this video for some reason, be sure to hit subscribe and check out my back catalog of other videos. I got a ton of cool terrain building videos and several other monster making videos for you to enjoy and get started making your own. That's it for this week, guys. Cheers and happy crafting.